Hi guys, it's Martha from Martha Book Dragon. Um, I've been away for a while. Um, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, all those sorts of things. Um, I hope everybody had a lovely festive season. Um, if anybody's got any New Year's resolutions going, seeing as we're a week in, I hope everybody's are going pretty well. But I thought it was about time I get got back in front of the camera and did a wrap up for December. Um, apologies for the wet hair and the mildly dishevelled appearance. I'm having it's Sunday and I'm having probably what my family would call a um, pants washing day, as in you stay indoors and you do all the jobs that you haven't done before during the week to get yourself prepared for the following week. So, so that's why I look a little bit um, unkempt, but I thought, seeing as I was doing things that were useful, I thought I'd get in front of here and do this wrap up. So, without further ado, I won't ramble any further. The first, these were in no particular order, by the way, either by how far I enjoyed them or indeed when I read them, just these are all the ones that I read in December. So, first one is Christmas, a biography by Judith Flanders. Now, this one I um, picked up because I thought, well, it's very Christmassy, but it's a bit non-fiction. It would tell me a bit about um, about the history of Christmas and the festive season. And it was really interesting, actually. I would um, totally recommend it. I've read a couple of Judith Flanders before, mostly about uh, the Victorian period. And she's always very... Um, very knowledgeable, always provides interesting tidbits, but always makes sure that she gives um, good academic stuff as well. Um, so yeah, lots of interesting history in here. So for instance, um, the thing that I thought in the current context of um, how we're all supposed to be ultra PC now and say um, festive season rather than happy Christmas and people are saying, oh, we need to go back to the good old days when people said happy Christmas. Well, actually in the Victorian period when Christmas cards were first introduced, they actually said compliments of the season, not Merry Christmas. So there we go. Yeah, um, I totally recommend this one. Obviously, it's quite um, themed to a particular time of year. But if you get a chance to pick this one up, totally go for it. I think I might try and read it next year as well. It was good. Uh, the next non-fiction book that I picked up was Trials of Passion, Crimes in the Name of Love and Madness by Lisa Apinyas Nessie. Messed up that name again, sorry. Um, this one took a little while to go through. You may remember from my last video I was still reading this as a run-on from non-fiction November. But I did finally finish it and it was really interesting as I expected. Um, it took, it's quite dense and it took a while to read and it wasn't always entirely easy to follow but I would totally recommend it. it uh, that her, um, her cases are unusual, you, I've never heard of them before, so that was quite an interesting thing and I'm a little bit of a true crime buff, so that was quite interesting. All the stuff about um, mental health and um, ple um, pleading insanity in court, which is what this is really all about. Yeah, it was it was really good. I really enjoyed it. Um, again, totally recommend it. It's it's a great one. And her other one, uh, Mad, Bad and Sad, The History of Women and the Mad Doctors is also great as well. So yeah, that's that one. A uh, bit of a deviation here. I then read The Invisible Live Library by Genevieve Cogman, which is the first in a fantasy series. Um, I wouldn't say it was YA, but it's not it's not as in depth. It's no there's no Game of Thrones here, but it was an enjoyable romp. It's basically about um, a woman who works for a magical library that exists between different alternate worlds, and in order to keep those alternate worlds balanced, they have to go and steal books from these different worlds. So yeah, there was a lot of fun here. I enjoyed it. I am going on to read the rest of the books because they are enjoyable. Um, a few literary references but not too many so you know not too heavy going definitely not heavy going but yeah I enjoyed that one it was great for another one of the Christmas themed ones so I picked up Murder at the Old Vicarage by Jill McGowan uh, this one is I believe it's a rebranded version of something that's part of a series um, that wasn't originally called um, Murder at the Old Vicarage. Yeah, originally published as Redemption, which is the second of the Lloyd and Hill novels, apparently. Um, yeah, I might read some other ones of this. It was quite interesting. Uh, 
it was nice and Christmassy, which was good, and essentially what I what I wanted. So yeah, I, it was a nice, it was a nice little Christmassy book. It was quite short, so it didn't take me long. So I enjoyed that one as well. Next one was The Tower by Alessandro Galenzi. Now, I thought I was going to really like this one, and I I saw it in the library and picked it up because I was really excited. Um, I'm quite glad in the end when I'd seen it in bookshops before I'd been like oh should I buy it should I not buy it, it because it's um, it's a sort of it's a it's a historical thriller but it's got sort of modern periods so it's got a sort of a modern period aspect to it and it's all about historical documents and also going back to the historical period and it's about um, a character called Giada Giordano Bruno who was a, um, a philosopher and potential actually spy in the Tud in the Elizabethan period. Um, I don't know if any of you have read uh, S.J. Paris's novels I think they begin with the, I think the first one is treachery possibly um, or heresy actually um, and they're all around this character as well so it was going to be potentially really interesting. It was to do with his um, encounter with the Span, um, with the Inquisition, and um, that sort of thing. But oh, it was dull. It was really dull. Um, it was a struggle to get through. The um, the historical bit was interesting enough, but fairly repetitive and boring. And the modern bit was really dull, and I couldn't have cared less about the characters. I really thought I was going to really enjoy this one and I was totally disappointed. Um, I think I gave it three stars just about because yeah it was alright but yeah I can't recommend it. Sorry. Yeah. Well, let's try and move on to something. Yes, move on to something that I really did love, like super loved. Um, the Red Notebook by Antoine Lorraine. Um, this is a little, um, probably call it a little novella really, and it's based in Paris. Um, it was, this is so sweet, I love this book. Um, it was basically, it's basically about a bookseller who comes across a lady's handbag that has been stolen from her, and um, it doesn't have a clue to her identity because all of her identity cards have been stolen, um, but he has to work out, and it also contains a red notebook um, which has a lot of her thoughts and jottings in and so he sets out to find this woman and you also get the parallel story of the woman who's had the bag stolen and what happens to her and yeah it was it was really sweet uh, it was yeah let, let's totally recommend this I'm gonna go and read all of his other books because yeah <laughs> this was really cute if you want a little cute story I can't think even what it's reminiscent of but I think that the thing that it felt closest to, oddly, was things like Strange Weather in Tokyo, but it was a bit more, it was a bit sweeter than that, a bit more um, well-rounded than that. Um, yeah, I'd totally recommend this. This is a little sweet story, wouldn't take long to read. Yeah, go for it. Less so. It wasn't a pleasant read, but less of a like huge recommendation. The Woman in Cabin 10 by Ruth Ware. Um, if you haven't heard of this one, I imagine you have because it's been doing the rounds as one of those huge thrillers, The Next Gone Girl, as they're called. Um, yeah, it was uh, it was a mystery set on a cruise ship cruising around, cruising around the um, I think the Scandinavian fields, Norwegian field fields, looking at the Northern Lights, um, and there's a mystery of a woman who should have been on board and isn't on board, and you know all that sort of stuff. Um, it was fine. I can't say that the conclusion was particularly thrilling or that the, I didn't, well, I, I worked out the mystery halfway through, meh. It was fine, it was enjoyable. I got through it pretty quickly. If you're interested in something that's sort of chewing gum for the, for the brain, yeah, go for it, it was fine. It was good. Uh, last few. Um, Another Christmassy winter themed one, The Mistletoe Bride and Other Haunting Tales by Kate Moss. Um, this is a selection of short stories, some of which are sort of wintry themed. Um, some of them are sort of, um, a lot of them are sort of ghost themed. Some of them are quite sad, quite haunting. Um, I wouldn't say any of them were particularly scary, but you know, uh, a little bit touching 
no, perhaps that's the wrong word. Um, got under your skin a little bit. I really enjoyed this. I think I would put this on a list to perhaps reread next year, particularly so, some of them were better than others, but I did. I did totally enjoy this one. Um, I know that Kate Moss has a bit of a bad reputation in her other novels for being a bit long-winded, but her style of writing was really good here. Um, for the short story, benefit of being a short story collection, it wasn't long-winded and therefore the points got across pretty effectively. Yeah, I would recommend this one. Go for it. Last couple, we're nearly there, I promise. Um, I knew that it was, I had it on my shelf and I knew that it was coming out into a um, TV adaptation over Christmas, so I plunged into The Miniaturist by Jessie Burton earlier in the month. Um, this one is a it's basically it's a sort of mystery but not really it's a sort of historic it's essentially a historical novel um with slightly odd mystery paranormal elements to it um it's set in 1686 in amsterdam and it follows a um girl in her late teens who's just sort of got married to a amsterdam merchant and she goes to live in his house with him and his uh, slightly scary sister um and she's sort of in this, in, you know, she's essentially in a marriage where she doesn't know anybody and she's a complete stranger and she's having to sort of try and make her way in the family. Um, yeah, and then she gets given a gift of a doll's house by her new husband and she engages a miniaturist to create things for this doll's house. Um, but the miniaturist sort of sends things that are a little bit weird. Um, perhaps predict the future yeah so th and there's a lot of other stories in here I enjoyed this it was pretty sad actually um I actually didn't end up watching the tv adaptation because I couldn't endure going through the story again um not from a bad point of view but just from a it was yeah it was pretty depressing um it's very well written I did enjoy it when I was reading it as much as you can enjoy enjoy something that was depressing um, I'm not sure that the miniaturist storyline in this is the most important storyline. There are some more historical ones and sort of relationship ones that were more important than the slightly magical aspects of the, the miniaturist bit. Um, but I would recommend it. I've got um, The Muse, which I believe is Jesse Burton's second novel, on my um, audible subscription to listen to at some point this year so I will totally give that a go it was well written I would recommend this yeah it was good and last but not least um, I read The Mistletoe Murder and Other Stories by P.D. James which was just a collection of I think three little um, Christmassy wintry themed stories um, Two of them were based on P.G. James's, um, well, were taken from P.G. James's Adam Delgleish novels, none of which I've read, but I might read now. I really enjoyed this. The storylines were, were quite compelling, quite interesting. Um, one of the, so they're both, um, some of them are quite cosy, and well, two of them are cosy mysteries, and then the one in the middle is quite scary, um, but really well written. Um, I want to pick up more of P.D. James, particularly I want to read his, her, her, <laughs> um, her other short story collection, which I think is called, I can't remember what it's called, but it's another short story collection before I start on reading the actual Adam Delgleish stories. Um, yeah, this was good. I enjoyed this. Uh, last of my Christmassy books and last of my books for December, but yes, go for it. It's good. And that is it. So, um, yeah, I hope you're all having a good day and that was vaguely entertaining and I will hopefully see you all again soon.